because most people think of stews and casseroles when they buy a slow cooker, but it's useful for all sorts of other things too. Think of Christmas Day when you've got a Christmas pudding cooking and you can leave it unattended, there'll be no panic and it'll be perfectly all right by lunchtime. In the bottom here, um, it, there's still plenty of water, even though this has been cooking for four hours. Do you see this pleat in the top here? If you put a pleat in the soil, it means that the pudding can rise and not plop the top off. Bacon so kidney pud? No, not no. this time. It's rhubarb and orange. It's a lovely combination which my family really enjoy. Off with the lid. And then when you're going to turn it out, just loosen it round the edge with a palette knife. That's the bendy one. That all helps it to come out in one go. Then a plate on top. A cloth round helps too. Up and over. Peel for me. Then off with the bowl. Oh, that smells lovely. And as it's rhubarb and orange, how about a slice of fresh orange on top? And a lovely orange sauce to go with it. Would you like to try it? Thank you. Oh, oh never mind. This ceramic top is so easy to clean, yeah. just with one shell spoon. And it doesn't get into the corners yeah. either. Let's have that sauce in the sauce boat. Jenny, how are you getting on over there with your slow cooker? Oh, it's fine, thank you, Mary. Now, excuse me. Can anybody guess what's inside here? It smells winey. One of those posh French jobs, is it then? Well, <laughs> it's oh. a drink. It's mulled wine. And a slow cooker is really good for this because it heats everything so gently that you don't boil away all that lovely alcohol you've put in. And have you got everything in there, Jenny? Have you got that finely uh, sliced lemon mm -hmm. and cinnamon sticks? Mm -hmm. Couple, perhaps? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Where did you get those from? Well, actually, they're not hard to find now. You can get them from Delicatessen and most supermarkets. And I've also got the brandy in there, Mary. I've got a bit of the reputation, haven't I? <laughs> no. no, this really is good for a party. And in fact, it's much cheaper than offering your guests, say, a whiskey or a gin. Mm -hmm. Could I ask one of you to put this on the table over there, please? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And thinking of parties, my brother's children absolutely adore crisps. Tell me, what kid that doesn't? Well, precisely. And if you've got 12 children, then in no time at all, they'll get through as many packets of crisps. But this deep fat fryer will do a mountain of fresh crisps for the price of about three large potatoes. I didn't realize that was on. I can hardly smell it. And that's just one of its advantages. In this deep fat fryer, you have an extreme control of temperature. Here, with this button, I'm setting it to 170 for donuts, and when it reaches that temperature, the light goes out. And you heat the oil to just the right temperature, and then you fry actually with the lid on, because this has got a special filter in this lid, and it takes away all the smells. And while Jenny's doing those crisps, I'm going to make some donuts. Are those the ones with the lovely jam inside? They will be, and you're <laughs> wondering how the jam gets in the middle. Exactly. <laughs> so, First of all, you need to take a, an enriched dough and roll a ball shape, and you do this in the palm of your hand, pressing down. And then turn it upside down and put the jam in the middle. Now, if you were having these made in a baker's shop, they have a sort of a syringe thing that pipes it in, but we don't have that. So take a little jam. Now, don't be over generous at this stage. If the blob's too big, it'll get all over your hand. You could always add a little bit later. Then pull the dough over the top of the jam and you don't need any uh, liquid or to stick it down you can do it just as it is and then you've got your shaped donut ready to fry and for ring donuts at least you wouldn't get jam all over yourself make a hole in the center with your finger and evenly round there we are like that and then if you want to make little tiny donuts for the children take a little piece off a lump roll it into a round and then you can fry these little balls uh, in deep fat and then pop them into cinnamon and sugar or just sugar. And I've got some doughnuts here and you just toss them in in the sugar and they've got that lovely crispy outside. Suppose I wanted to do fish and chips one day and doughnuts the next. Surely the taste would carry over. Well, no, not if you've got a deep fat fryer like this one because it's thermostatically controlled and the oil doesn't get too hot, it doesn't smoke and you get perfect frying every time. And also, you must strain the fat from time to time. Wait till it gets cold, and then strain out those little bits of chips. 
and they won't burn next time you cook. Well, I think the bread should be ready about now, Mary, so excuse me. Thank you. Oh, yes. What's that at the back? That's the fan in the oven, and having a fan means that you get the heat very evenly distributed over all the shelves, so if you've got several things baking at once, you get them beautifully evenly browned. Also, with a fan oven, you use a slightly lower temperature, and that means that you're saving fuel and it costs you less. Now, these look really very good, Mary. What do you recommend as the best glaze for bread? I like to use beaten egg and milk together. Together? Yes. <laughs> In equal quantities. Now, this is what I want to have a go at next, please, because I've seen it advertised on television, but I've never actually tried it. I couldn't help overhearing you, Mrs. Yes. Well, uh, you're wrong, actually. They really are very easy to clean, and they have come with tray trays like these, and that's got a non-stick lining, uh, which is washed very easily, and also inside the contact grill, that's non-stick too. My children love using these. They do sort of eggs and bacon. It doesn't involve me. I get time off. And they'll even wash it up because, as I say, it's easy to clean. I was thinking of getting one for my flat, maybe for the odd beef burger, even a steak, if I can afford it. Well, why don't you try something a little bit more exciting? Something like a gammon with pineapple and a nice spicy topping. Now, what I've got here is uh, mixed spices with a little of the pineapple um, juice blended with it and a little mustard and a little sugar. As you can imagine, that will give a lovely shiny glaze. You put them in the tray, like this, and then you put the slices of pineapple at the end, and you cook them for, uh, in the contact grill for about seven minutes. And it's clamped between the two uh, hot metals, and it cooks beautifully evenly on top and underneath. What's that you're hiding in the corner? Come on, turn it up. It's uh, some flapjack mixture. It's really delicious, and I cook it in the contact grill. To make flapjacks, first of all, you need to cream the butter and sugar together. Use brown sugar. I like demerara best. Then add some currants, and then add the rolled oats, that's breakfast oats, porridge oats. And you just work all that together until it clings together, then tip it out into the contact grill tray, non-stick, so it won't stick. Press it into the sides. Now, this is where the children come in, very helpful in holiday time. They like to pat it out too. Uh, Five is only left. <laughs> <laughs> it does taste rather good at this stage. Get it well into the corners. And when it's all even, you then cook it in the contact grill until it's a crispy brown colour. Now, Jenny, if you can put this in the preheated contact grill and cook it for about 10 minutes. And I've heated the contact grill at the back here, and these will take about 7 minutes. Well, now we're on to cakes and things. May I show you my favourite panic recipe? It's for scotch pancakes. Is that the same as drop scone, the same recipe? <laughs> yes, exactly the same it is. And it really is a good panic recipe because it takes a very short time to mix up the batter and only a minute or two to cook them. And for this, I'm using the multi-purpose cooker as a griddle because it's far more economical. Did you use bicarb, Jenny? For this amount, about a teaspoonful. Must be like my mum used to make. Yes, but I expect your mother didn't have a freezer so that she could freeze them because it, they really do freeze extremely well and taste just as good. You have to cool the pancakes slip them into a polythene bag, pop them in the freezer, and keep them there for no longer than a month. And when it comes to the time when you want to enjoy them, take them out of the freezer, thaw, and reheat either in the microwave or a multi-purpose cooker. Marvellous. And they are delicious, even hot. Would anybody like to try one? Mm, thank you. And yeah. even better, with butter melting all over them or with honey or jam. I've got something really delicious in my multi-purpose cooker, a Hungarian goulash. Let me just turn it off at the mains and pull the plug out. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> so I've got it cooking in here. Let me show you the ingredients that I use to make it. Up we come. So, now I've got the lid on and you have the vent closed at the front here when you're uh, cooking a casserole or a stew and when you're roasting you open the vent then all the steam comes up and you get a nice crisp outside to that roast uh, and now the ingredients first of all you need pork and that's just a little bit expensive it's fillet of pork cut in strips 
very delicious. And you fry the pork fillet uh, in the multipurpose cooker without the lid. It's a non-stick surface, and you can get it beautifully brown. Then you lift that out, and you fry mushrooms, sliced mushrooms and onion, till they're brown. Then add the stock, return the meat and the paprika, salt, lots of ground black pepper, and then put the lid on and simmer for about 45 minutes until it's beautifully tender. And then we come to the adding the cream stage. You, um, this is sour cream, and let me give you a tip about the sour cream. If you add just a little bit of corn flour to it, you'll find that when you add it, it doesn't curdle. It goes in beautifully smoothly. Just wants a few more moments cooking. And then to make it look really beautiful, a little bit of chopped parsley all over the top. Actually, that dish looks smart enough to go straight into the dining room. Mm. Uh, indeed it does, and what I like is when it comes out of the dining room, mm. because you can take it straight to the sink when it's empty, and plunge it into the sink, and you can even put the socket here into uh, soapy water and get it clean easily because of the non-stick lining. Do you think the flapjacks would be ready yet, Mary? I think they should be. They've had their ten minutes. Oh, look at that. Bubbly and golden brown. Now, don't cut them up quite yet, Jenny, because you want to let it set a little before marking it out. And I would think about 12 pieces would be right. Lovely. How's your gammon? Well, that should be ready, too, by the smell. Oh, they look good. And it's very hot, so I'm taking great care. There we are. I'm not the two hungry ones here. <laughs> Remove my parsley. I'm a great believer of a bit of colour when we come to the finishing. They're lovely and crispy brown on top. That's the spices that help that. Now, I could have put here six bacon chops instead of the gammon. They would easily get in the tin. And then on top, the pineapple. And then to give a nice lot of colour, some crispy, fresh parsley. Can I ask you to pop that on the table yes. with all the other things ready for us to taste later? Thank you. Now, how about a family roast with all the trimmings? Well, it's very kind of you, dear, but I have to go quite soon. <laughs> I'm afraid we all have to, but I think what Mary means is a microwave roast. Oh. The microwave, just behind her there. Now, I've already done starters in the microwave. These are soused herring. This is before and after. And if I had put this in a conventional oven, I would have had to have left it there for over half an hour instead of the eight minutes that it took in the microwave. So it saves time and money. Not many people realise that you can roast in a microwave. Now, I've got a very posh roast here. It's called a guard of honour. And it's made of two best ends of neck of lamb. Uh, and the backbone has been taken out. That's chining it. So that it makes it very easy to carve. You just carve down the side and you give two bones per person. That's two cutlets per person. And I put a little bit of foil on the end of each bone. And that means that they don't dry out at all. I didn't think you could use tin foil in a microwave. Quite right. A lot of instructions say no metal, no metal dishes in a microwave, but you can use a little bit of foil on the end of uh, chop bones and chicken legs and so on, just to stop them drying out. During the roasting time, halfway through, just brush uh, a little bit of red currant jelly, or you could use mint jelly, brush it over. That helps to give a nice shiny glaze and makes the skin uh, very crisp. Now, it's very quick to roast. By the time you've done the vegetables and you've laid the table, the roast will be ready to serve. Do you have to add any liquid to it for a microwave? No, it keeps the joint beautifully moist because of the short cooking time, but you do get a few juices at the bottom, just like you do in the roasting tin, and you can make a delicious gravy from that, perhaps adding a little glass of wine, as it's special. I think I'd better start with the vitamins immediately. Mm. Vegetables coming up, Mary. Right, well, the vegetables are nearly done, Mary, so mm -hmm. I'll finish off the grilled stuffed peaches. It's two peach halves per person, and this mixture is two tablespoons of cake crumbs, one of ground almonds, some almond essence, and some raspberry jam. It may not look good, but it tastes delicious. So it's about a teaspoon in each half, like this. Not exactly cordon bleu, but my husband adores them. Are they fresh and peaches, Jenny? Well, these aren't, actually. These are tinned. But if you can get cheap, fresh peaches, which doesn't happen very often, mm -hmm. uh, it is much better, obviously. But now just under the grill till they're warmed through and browned on the top, so excuse me. Oh, lovely. Now my lamb is ready. It took 20 minutes to cook in the microwave. And then you leave it to rest for 10 minutes, wrapped 
Piscean foil, then I'm going to garnish it with cherries and, and frills and things. But let me show you the cooker. When you cook with a microwave, it's a very clean way of cooking. You don't get any splattering or grease. I'm going to wipe round inside and the door. And as you can see, there's no dirt whatsoever. A very clean way of cooking. Is it quite safe? Um, yes, Mrs. Pierce, it is safe. All these appliances have been thoroughly tested by the electricity people and they don't approve them unless they're absolutely safe. Now back to my roast. Take off the foil and there you can see the glaze has given it a lovely shine and I'm going to finish it with cherries and frills alternately. The peaches are ready, Mary. Look at that. Oh, mm. Right, Mary, well, while you're finishing the lamb, uh, shall I suggest mulled wine for everyone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, look. Oh, actually, we've got so much food. A microwave cooks in a fraction of the time taken by a conventional cooker, be it gas or electric. Using a slow cooker is better than simmering on the hob all day. And the contact grill saves time by cooking both sides at once. The multi-purpose cooker, apart from cooking more or less anything, is smart enough to go straight on the table. And only an electric deep fat fryer gives accurate, safe cooking temperatures. Pan ovens cook evenly, and they're faster and cleaner and simpler to use. 